Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Intermediate Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 9.1, which is translations of parabolas. Uh, it's also called uh, transformations of parabolas. Essentially, the first thing we're going to look at is our library function of f of x equals x squared. This is our most basic of parabolas. If we are to graph some points for this function here, uh, if I put in 0 for x, f of 0, 0 squared is 0. If I put in a value of 1, well, 1 squared is 1, so f of 1 equals 1. If I put in negative 1, negative 1 squared is also 1. And let's uh, put in 2 and negative 2. If I put in 2, f of 2, 2 squared is 4. So that's going to put us right here. If I put in a negative 2, negative 2 squared is also 4. And hopefully, we can see the pattern that this is forming. We should be relatively familiar with parabolas. We'll put in one last point. If I have 3, 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 squared is also 9. So we can now see the shape that we're achieving. And hopefully, we can see that u shape that's uh, similar with all parabolas. We get that u shape. So this is our standard library function, f of x equals x squared. And we plotted points to find that. And just to redefine something we covered in chapter 7, this is called the vertex, that lowest point or highest point of any parabola. So our vertex was 0, 0. Well, what would happen if we changed our input value? What if I uh, substituted in x plus 2? Uh, and if you recall, when we worked with uh, composing functions and algebra functions, we're evaluating this for a different function, x plus 2. Well, instead of having x squared, I have x plus 2. How does that change the graph? Well, let's plot some points and find out. If I put in, let's say, 0 for x, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So when I put in 0, I get out 4. What if I put in negative 1? Well, negative 1 plus 2 is going to give me 1. 1 squared is 1. Well, what if I put in positive 1? 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. That puts me right here. Well, if we look at this, we can see this piece of the graph that's increasing. That would be this right here. Well, what happens if I put in some values over here so I can see its behavior? Well, let's put in negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 squared is still 0. So negative 2, 0 is that point there. Let's pick a value over here. Let's say negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is going to give me negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Let's use negative 4. If I put in negative 4 plus 2, I get negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. And we'll go one last point. Negative 5 gives me positive 9. So we can see that exact same shape. And if I'm going to graph this, let's compare these two graphs and see what actually happened. It looks like the exact same shape. The only difference is where the vertex is located. Instead of being at 0, 0 like it was in our library function, it shifted two spots to the left. So we look at this and we see, well, x plus 2, by adding 2 to my x value, all of my inputs were, the outputs, excuse me, were shifted to the left two spots. But it's the exact same graph, only shifted to the left. Its vertex now, if I were to look at its vertex, this one had a vertex of 0, 0. This has a vertex of negative 2, 0. Let's look at another example before we sum up what's happening here. Now let's look at what if I put in a negative value here. We're subtracting 3 from x instead of adding 2. Well, let's go ahead and plot some points there. Let's start with 0. If I put in 0 for x, 0 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Well, that's this point right here. Let's put in positive 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is, oh, I made a little error there. All right. When I put in 0, I get negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 
When I put in positive 1, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. When I put in 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. When I put in positive 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 squared is still 0. If I put in 4, I'm going to get out 1. If I put in 5, I'm going to get out 4. And if I put in 6, we'll get out that value of 9. And if we graph this, how does this compare to the original x squared function? Well, instead of being at the origin, its vertex is now at the value 3, 0. And everything else is shifted to the right as well. So if we recall, in chapter 7, we looked at parabolas, and we talked about this axis of symmetry. What's to the right of this axis of symmetry is also to the left. And if we recall, axis of symmetry is where x equals the h value. That uh, h value is what we were adding or subtracting to the x value before we squared it. Well, if we look at this, what I'm adding to the x value before I square it is 2. But if we recall, it's always the opposite of what I see in here. If I see a x plus 2, I know the h value is negative 2. So my axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 2. Well, if we draw a line at x equals negative 2, we can see that it's symmetric to either side of that line. So by adding 2 to the input value, I shift the graph to the left. By subtracting a value, you see we have this. It has an axis of symmetry at x equals 3. It shifted the graph to the right. It took our library function, and if we subtract 3, it shifts it to the right which is the opposite of what I see in here. I see x minus 3, but it actually shifted everything to the positive 3, the opposite of what I see in there. So what this is called is a horizontal shift. What we add or subtract to x is going to shift its library function either to the left or to the right. Which way does it go depends on the sign. And it's always the opposite of what I see in here. If I see x plus 2, I know that it's shifting it to the left, negative. If I see x minus a number, I know it's going to shift it to the right. How far to the right? This many units. This, in this case, it was 3. And in this case, it was left 2. So that axis of symmetry is what we're actually horizontally shifting, horizontal left or right. So hopefully that makes sense. And we recall the concept of vertex. We're just moving the vertex of this parabola and every point from that vertex as our point of reference. What happens if we have a negative value of our x, a coefficient of the x squared term that's negative? Well, this is called reflecting across the x-axis. If we recall from chapter 7, if this leading coefficient is positive, our parabola opened up. If it's negative, it opens down. So if we think about our library function at the origin, well, this negative coefficient reflects it through the x-axis. So instead of opening up, we get a value that opens down. And it still has the same axis of symmetry of x equals 0 because we didn't shift it left or right. So whenever we have a negative coefficient out here, we should recognize it that that is a reflection through the x-axis. If we think about this as a mirror, instead of being up here, we reflected it down here. This is its reflection. And that's why we call this negative value here a reflection. All right. So let's look at the next one, which is a vertical shift. What if we don't add or subtract something to the x value before we square it, but we add something after? Essentially, what we're doing is we're adding something to the library function. So if I add something to the library function, let's go ahead and plot some points. Let's say we put in 0 for our input. Well, 0 squared is still 0, but now I'm going to add 2. Well, 0 squared is 0 plus 2 is 2. So when x is 0, we get out 2. Well, what about the value negative 1? If I put negative 1 in and square it, I get positive 1 plus 2 is 3. So when I have negative 1, I, my output is 3. If my input is positive 1, well, 1 squared is still 1, plus 2 is 3. And if we continue to plot points, we're going to see that we're going to get 
that parabola shape. It's still a parabola. It has that standard shape. It has an axis of symmetry. But how is it different from its library function? Well, instead of being a vertex at the origin, we shifted the vertex and every other point up two spots. We added two to the entire function. This is called a vertical shift. Now, unlike the horizontal shift, it is what it is. When you see this value, if it's positive, you're shifting it up. If it's negative, we'll shift it down, just like we'll see in the next example here. What if I were to subtract a value from the function? So we have x squared minus 4 in this example. If I plot some points, well, it's going to shift the whole graph down four spots. And hopefully we can see that behavior just shifts the graph down four spots. So its vertex is now the point 0, negative 4. And this vertex was 0, positive 2. This is the k value, if we recall, from chapter 7, just as the other value was what we call the h value, a horizontal and vertical shift. That's what we're looking at. So if we add something to the function after we square it, it shifts it up. If we subtract something to the function after we square it, it brings the vertex and every corresponding point down. So it translates the graph down. All right, let's look at an example where we have a combination of the two. Here I have f of x equals the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 5. Well, let's take this one piece at a time. Let's start with our library function. This is my library function. It is centered at the origin 0, 0. Well, the first thing I want to do is a horizontal shift. I look here and I say, well, the horizontal shift is always the opposite of what I see in here. So I know it's negative 3. That's going to shift the graph three spots to the left, or negative 3. So, Instead of being at the origin, 0, 0, I'm going to go over three spots. This point here is negative 3, 0. It's still a parabola, so I'm going to graph that parabola. And I get that same u shape. The only difference is it's moved three spots to the left from the origin. Now, if I look at this value, this is the vertical shift, something we call k. If we look at that, it's a negative 5. It is what it is. It shifts the graph down 5. So this is my new point of reference, because I did a translation. And now I'm ready to start from there. So this is where I'm at. The origin uh, over 3 to left is negative 3, so negative 3, 0. But now I want to shift it down 5. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This point is negative 3, negative 5. It's still a parabola, so I can go ahead and graph that parabola. And we see it has the axis of symmetry. And let's define that for a moment. The axis of symmetry, if we recall from chapter 7, was x equals the h value. In this case, the h value is what's in these parentheses before I square it, the opposite of what I see. So in this case, x equals negative 3. And we can see it is symmetric to the left and to the right of x equals negative 3, that vertical line, x equals negative 3. And the k value, well, the k value is how far up or down we shift it. k corresponds to a y value. I brought the y value of the vertex down 5. So our vertex. If we recall, vertex was the values h and k. Our vertex is negative 3, negative 5. And as we can see from the graph, that's the statement. Negative 3, negative 5 is this lowest point, this minimum of our graph. Let's look at another example that incorporates all three concepts, just, not just a horizontal shift left and right, but it also has this negative value out front. That means I have a reflection across the x-axis. So let's look at the library function again. Here's my library function. It's that parabola centered at the origin. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with this reflection. It's negative 
out front here. So I know that's a reflection through the x-axis. So my next graph is going to show that it is reflected through the x-axis. And we still have that symmetry. It still has the same vertex because my h and k values, I haven't considered those yet. It was 0, 0. It's still 0, 0, except now it reflects through the x-axis. Now I'm going to do the horizontal translation. Well, I look in here and I see x minus 4. So I see a negative 4. So I'm going to identify that my h value, or my horizontal shift, is to the right 4, plus 4. So from the origin, I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's my vertex for the parabola I'm about to graph. But since I'm going one piece at a time, it's going to reflect down. I already have that reflection. So let's reflect it down. So there is the parabola of negative quantity x minus 4 squared, because I haven't dealt with the vertical translation. So let's do the vertical translation next. So we're at the point for this one, 0, 4 or excuse me, 4, 0. And then we're going to go up 2. We're going to add 2 to all the output values. Well, that brings it up two spots. And now we would just graph the rest of it. It's still reflected down. And it's translated to the right four spots, but now it's up 2. This final value here is 4, 2. And if we go back to this, we can see, well, the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4, 2. That is my vertex, 4, 2. Hopefully, we recall this from chapter 7. All right, so let's do a little summation, kind of tie chapter 7, where we dealt with quadratics and quadratic functions, which were parabolas or are parabolas. In standard form, a, a parabola is written as a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, where h and k, the opposite of h, the opposite of what I see in there is my h value, and k, this is the vertex. Now, what does h do? It is the horizontal shift. It goes left or right, depending on what it is. If, it's, if h is a negative value, we're going to the left. If h is a positive value, we're going to the right. And it's always the opposite of what I see in there, because it's x minus the h value. The k value is the vertical shift. It either goes up if it's positive or down if it's negative. It is what it is. What we see there, we take it at face value, because it's not within any parentheses. It's not being uh, squared or any other operation upon it. Which direction does it open? Well, if a is positive, essentially a positive value, it's going to open up like the library function. But if a is a negative value, if we see a negative out front, we know that it's going to open down. It's going to be reflected across the x-axis. One other thing that we had in chapter 7 that we don't see in this section is the width of a parabola. If the absolute value of a, so it does, we're not looking at the sign, if it's greater than 1, it makes it narrower. Instead of having a library function like this, if a is a value greater than 1, it's narrower. If a is a value between 0 and 1, it's wider. Maybe it's a coefficient of 1 half. Well, that just means that it's wider than our standard library function. So hopefully, we recall that as well. All right, so here's an example that I want you to try. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to draw out three graphs. And I want you to graph this first by doing its library function, then doing its reflection, and then do the final graph of that uh, final transformation. You have to determine whether it's a horizontal or vertical transformation. So try this yourself. Make sure you do three graphs, the library function, your first translation, and then your final translation. Try that yourself. This has been section 9.1. Thank you for watching.